Okay, we have our 10 cases that we've tumbled for an hour, and we're going to remove them now. Um, depending on the volume of cases that you tumble, there's different ways you may want to go about this. Um, let's say we had hundreds of pistol rounds in here. We aren't going to necessarily want to fish them all out by hand. There's some devices that are made that make the job a little easier. This is a simple tray that fits on the top of a five gallon bucket that's uh, distributed by Lyman. You could pour your media right out of the tumbler through this. It would collect it all in the bucket and it would sort out your brass. You could shake it out. Um, you can even use things as simple as a kitchen colander. You can tell from the discoloration in here that I've used this quite a bit. Uh, but for something as, as simple as 10 cases, we're going to just pick them out by hand and we're going to tap them to make sure we have the, the media out of them and put them in our loading block. There's a couple of things that you want to pay particular attention to, especially if you use um, corn cob or walnut media. One of them is you can get one of these pieces stuck in the, um, the actual hole in the primer pocket that the flash goes through to ignite the powder. You obviously don't want a, a, an artificial barrier there to inhibit that uh, flash from reaching the powder. So as you sort these and get ready to load them, you're going to want to take a final look inside each primer pocket to make sure that it's uh, empty. I even keep a piece of wire. It's actually just a standard twist tie off of a bag of some sort. I've got one end of it that's uh, been stripped. It's very soft wire so I can't harm the brass, but I can use it to just poke out a hole, poke out a piece of media if I get one stuck in the hole there. Um, the last thing that you want to pay attention to is that uh, because this is rifle ammunition and because we have um, had to lube the inside of the neck, it's possible uh, especially if the lube builds up a little bit on the plug in the die, it's possible as this is being extracted, especially as the plug hits the forceful part where it has to be pulled through the neck, it's possible for clumps of the um, lube to come off and get deposited right inside the base of the neck there. If you look in the cases, you can actually see it, and you can even see pieces of corn cob or walnut media stuck in clumps of the lube. It's not something you can control because it's going to build up in there over time and uh, clearly you could clean the dies periodically, you could disassemble them and clean them periodically, but if you're doing 50 or 100 or 200 or 500 rifle rounds, you aren't going to necessarily be stopping regularly to look up inside there to see if any of the lube is de being deposited on the um, uh, on the, the plug. Now, one of the easiest tricks that I've found, and let me grab the media again because I normally do this over the media, is I simply take a Q-tip, a dry Q-tip, and I run it um, quickly in all of the cases like this one at a time. Um, and as you can see from the pictures on your screen, there's actually some um, stuff that can get deposited in here and this other picture here shows a little pile of media that just came out of a group of 10 or 20 cases so clearly it's possible um, I've not seen this piece of advice anywhere before so I'm not sure how conscientious other people are about it but I like to make sure that each of the cases is completely clean and um, empty of even all of the kernels of media before I, I proceed. There's one last thing that we'll talk about, and that's the primer pockets. Um, there are relatively more elaborate or less elaborate tools. This is my, this is all of my trimmers and miscellaneous pieces of uh, hardware that I keep together. There's a very simple tool here that, that literally costs two or three dollars, which is a primer pocket cleaner. Now, if we tumbled these before we sized them, and then especially if we tumbled them after we sized them, chances are uh, virtually any of the loose deposits in the primer pockets have already been knocked off. And there's been a considerable amount of discussion in the uh, reloading uh, magazines and, and among the, the professional uh, reloading writers as to whether or not it's even worth bothering cleaning primer pockets. This little tool um, I, I use, it has a larger end for the larger primer pockets and a smaller end for the smaller primer pockets. Literally just spin it around a couple of times. If you try this and you look at a case that's just clean from the tumbler and one where you spun this around a little bit, you're going to see it's a little cleaner. Now the, the reality is 
the deposits from the primers igniting doesn't continue to build up more and more crud in a primer pocket. The reality is when the first one goes off, it's going to leave some uh, deposits in the primer pocket, but then when subsequent primers go off, even if you hadn't cleaned the primer pockets, it's going to blow off as much of the old stuff as it is going to deposit new. So they're not going to continue to accumulate um, gunk where they get to the point where they build up. They're going to simply be a little bit on the dirtier side and they're going to stay that way, which is why a lot of people are deciding anymore um, that as long as the, the hole itself that allows the ignition through to the powder is clear, there's really the very little to be gained from cleaning the primer pockets. Now you will find that your ultra accurate, ultra precision shooters will probably do everything. They will be doing a lot more in terms of sorting their cases. They'll even measure the thickness of the, the necks for concentricity. They will very carefully um, trim to exact lengths. They will do everything possible, including cleaning primer pockets to enhance that accuracy. But for your average shooter, even your average target shooter, there's not going to be a whole lot to be gained. I simply do it because um, that's the way I am and I just like to have the, the cases relatively clean um, through and through when I reload them, but I don't spend a lot of time on it. There are prep stations that will put a whole lot more effort into it than this. Ironically, using the prep station, you run the risk of doing even more damage than if you do it with this simple means. Because, let's face it, you're not going to spend uh, five minutes doing a hundred circulations of this in a case, but if you're dealing with a, cape, a, a case prep station where the arbor is being rotated, if you're distracted and you hold this on a little bit too long, you actually can remove a little bit too much material. And what you'll find is you'll start getting primer seating too deeply and you'll start getting misfires as a result of it. So um, I always just run this around to make sure there's nothing um, no excess crud in the, the primer pockets. I always look to make sure, physically check to make sure the, the opening is free. I check the insides to make sure I haven't accumulated any um, deposits of the lube and kernels of the, um, the, the cleaning compound. And so here you have it. We are done with these 10 cases and we're ready to go on to the next step, which will be priming.